On today's show, we're going to continue our conversation on Writing Groups 101. So stay tuned. Greetings and welcome to the Christian Indie Writers Podcast, where we inform, encourage, and support Christian indie writers on the journey toward publication. We also inform, encourage, and support. I got that backwards. I'm Jennifer Carl Tong, <laughs> and I write historical Christian romance. I'm Christina Katane, and I write Christian dystopian fantasy. I'm Jamie Hirschberger, and I write short fiction under the pen name J.R. Nichols. And you might have noticed we're still one host short. We still covet your prayers for our lovely friend, Rhonda Hagerman, as she re, uh, as she uh, deals with and recovers from a, a health issue. And um, we love you, Rhonda. If you're paying attention, if you're out there, we have uh, been praying for you. And we miss you so, so much. Yes. So mm -hmm. we've got some chatters happening, uh, some chatting going on. Barbara's over there on Facebook, keeping us alive on Facebook. Good morning, Barbara. Liz says, good morning as well. Good to have you here, Liz. Uh, Piper says, hey, all. So I would we like to start every week with our what's up. If you guys are new here, this is one of our segments where we just check in with each of our hosts and check in to see what has been going on since our last episode. And so I'm going to start with you, Tina. What's up with you? Well, I had a really good week. It's, it was really super pro productive. So I'm happy yeah. about that. And I, found, I got some news last night that has me a little excited. Um, there are, we're having camp meeting in July and the, the district said that I could have a table at the back of the tabernacle to sell my books. So that was really exciting. I ordered like 50 of each book, book one and book two, mm -hmm. and I got a banner and I got like table tents in case, with a QR code in case they want to buy it off a digital copy off of Amazon. And so then last night I found out that the first Sunday night of our camp meeting is going to be a Stephen Curtis Chapman concert. Wow. That's and great. little old me is going to be in the back with my little table of books. And my husband said, maybe you should order more. <laughs> <laughs> is this open so to the public, this concert? I, I, they don't like keep people from coming. So wow, I don't know that like, awesome. they're advertising it to the public, but it's certainly anybody's welcome to come. Yeah. Tina messaged me last night and I was like, what? I started sending her what memes. Like, are you kidding me? Like, that's pretty exciting. That is, it is that's exciting. awesome. How exciting. I'm, I'm more excited about the chance to sell all my books on the first day than I am. Right. <laughs> you have the rest of the week off. <laughs> <laughs> then you can actually vacation the rest of the week that's awesome i am hoping to go to the same camp meeting tina and i are in the same denomination and um <clears throat> trying to get uh, so actually would require some prayer because we're trying to like um purchase a trailer this summer and um we just got some news on my husband's job so that might be on hold now so we're just kind of like trying to figure things out but so my what's up is um had a meeting this week with my mom's um with the home that she's in and about her medications and her progress and it wasn't good which well how did that blood test come back the, the blood test that... came back fine no okay. cancer so okay, that's good. praise god um but um yeah so i just i just appreciate if everyone would be praying for my mom it's just just very it's a terrible disease it's an absolutely terrible terrible disease but a positive thing I want to talk about in my what's up is our Facebook group is popping like <laughs> so cool. And just and a lot of it has to do with our great um, moderators that we have that help us out over there. And um, if you have not joined our our Facebook group yet, you need to go. I think we have. Yes, it's in the show notes. Um, you need to go on over and join the Facebook group because there's a lot of stuff happening over there. Um, Joe or Maria Johnson has um she shares every wednesday a work in progress theme or a, a prompt and um you can share something you've already written or you can write something fresh and share it and we all then support each other and, and it's so much fun over there there's shenanigans happening um i know i just get i look forward to going to facebook just to check that group out right now so it's been very very exciting so i'm loving that 
Liz says her what's up. Her proof copy arrived a few days ago. Yay. <laughs> I'm so glad I ordered one because seeing it made me realize my top margin is way too small. Oh, oh. yeah. I'm telling you the proof copy is like, it, it's exciting. My favorite thing. I, I still keep my proof copies. Let me show you. Because I take them and I they, they go to my final copy editor. I make get a proof before I get a copy editor. And then I get it back like this for my copy editor. Like all the editing that I do and going through another editor. And then it comes back to me and I edit it again. And I still have all that. So I, I love proof copies. They make me excited. All right, Jamie, what about you? What's well, up with um, you? Yeah, I want to say good morning to Barbara and Liz and Piper and Shell and Gigi. Just wanted to say hi and thanks for coming to support us because we're here for you all. We love you and we appreciate you giving us a reason to show up. Thanks a lot. And anyone um, listening to the later, I love you too. And I hope you'll join the Facebook group so I can meet you. Okay, so for today, I wanted to see what um, the Stoics had to say about truth telling well, you know, when like, cause I'm not an expert at Google yet, I would just get like 50 stoic truths or whatever. But this, um, this Marcus Aurelius quote really seemed to hit me today. If it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say it. And I was like, well, I don't think that you could sum it up any more perfectly. And then I wanted to compare that with a Bible quote. And of course there's a million Bible verses about telling the truth. But, um, oh my goodness, I lost the one that I wanted to say. Well, there's a whole bajillion of them. But the one that I wanted to talk about was the one that says, um, be good to each other because, um, oh, here we go. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. And um, the, at the heart of you being so good or nice to other people should be this mentality that we're all part of the same body. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, why would you be harmful to, you know, a part of your body? And so you should be good to the other peeps in your oh, world. Agreed. Good that's message. My Jamie. What's up? Oh, thanks. There's also my favorite that's in the Sermon on the Mount that just simply says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Amen. There you go. Yep. We have a new chatter. Welcome to Craig Rule, I believe is how you pronounce your name. He says, first time viewer here. Well, we're glad to have you, Craig. I hope you enjoy your time with us. Um, and you'll find that we have a very welcoming chat, live chat over there that will help answer questions. And uh, we'll try to answer any questions you have as well. Um, let's see. Piper has a what's up. She says, still working on work in progress, but signing gremlins up for summer reading at library. I showed gremlin one the copy of my book there and was thrilled at her reaction. I need to donate books two and three. Good That's awesome. That is awesome. Um, yeah, I'll never forget the first time that we went into Barnes and Noble with my girls and my book was there. Like, I think that it was like one of those, and they were little. So, I mean, I don't know if it had as big of a thing, but like, it just kind of was like a what? Like, like we knew you wrote mom and we knew that, but like to like walk into our favorite store in the world and there your stuff is. I, but I was also very kind of like geeking out too. Like, actually, I didn't even see it there first. It was someone else saw it, took a picture of themselves standing next to the bookshelf and tagged me in it on social media. And then we went right in to see it. So it wasn't like it was all, a big surprise. So all that I can think of right now is, do you remember when you and I were in Barnes and Noble and I encouraged you to run over to people who were browsing the romance section and to yes. get feedback about your blurb or your synopsis or something? Yes. I, I think about that actually all the time. <laughs> so we used to, um, gosh, way back when, before any of us were published, and our writing group was still kind of young. We would randomly like just meet places. We we were doing Panera all the time, Panera bread. But Panera is expensive, especially when you're like not published yet. And you're like, <laughs> and so we're like, well, let's let's do something. Let's try to go somewhere else. So we went into Barnes and Noble because you know they have a ours has a Starbucks and seating. Problem is, is that like everybody goes there. So there's like no seating. There was nowhere for us to hardly sit. It was like difficult, but we were trying to, this is when we were trying to do the snowflake method. Do you remember that? Yes. Oh, and that yes. works for a lot of people. It doesn't work for me, but I didn't know that then I was trying it. <laughs> and so if you want to know about this, you can Google snowflake. He's got a book out. I mean, it's like, it's a proven method. It just doesn't work for me anyway. So you start off with at least like writing kind of, kind of like writing your blurb before you do anything else, which actually is good advice. 
Um, and I wasn't sure. And so Jamie's like, go on, just go into the romance section and ask people if they would read this book. And it was like, I'm not a shy person, but I got shy. I was like, ah, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, like, and finally I did it because, you know, it's Jamie and she's very encouraging. And so, um, yeah, it was very fun. The people first, the first person kind of like weirded out. Like, why are you talking to me? And <laughs> because we're all like, biblical fathers, right? most of us are like all about books and like, don't talk to me. I don't go mm. here to socialize. I just go here to read. <laughs> They're probably introverts. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, the next person was very generous. She's like, I would read that. She was very nice. And you know, so. If Jamie had now. asked me to do that, I would have ran for the hills. Right. <laughs> I, should, I should do it now. I should like write out my blurb for book one and go and say that. Would you read this book? Sure, I'd read it. Well, good. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Guerrilla Barnes, marketing. Guerrilla marketing. Barnes and Noble might frown upon that. They might. I don't know. It's a book sale. They may not. So. Same. All right. So speaking of writing groups, uh, this is what we are continuing today. Last week we spoke about uh, we discussed having um, firm expectations for your group, setting up like your what you want from this group. Because we talked about the fact that we hear often, oh, you're so lucky to have a writing group. I wish I could find a writing group. I can't find a writing group. So we're like, sister, go create a writing group. This is where we're at, is that you need to start your own writing group. So this week, we're going to move on past. We're, last week, we talked about having firm expectations for your group and then reaching out to your first potential partner to get things up and running. So um, for this week, when we were planning it, I said, mm -hmm. we need to have an episode <laughs> on rules because to have a successful writing group, you have to have good, clear rules. And Tina was like, eh. <laughs> So Tina, I, tell us what your reaction I, was. I think I, what I actually said is, can we not call them rules? Could we call them boundaries or something? <laughs> we officially, we, uh, we eventually got there, but at first you were just like, I don't know that I would agree with that statement <laughs> because different personalities, right? This is why our, our group works is because we do have different personalities, but we understand it and we have learned to like, to appreciate each other for our differences. And I am a rule follower. That's, I've learned that about myself. Um, I'm also a rule maker. <laughs> I'm a firstborn female. I'm not the firstborn, but I'm the firstborn female in my family. And so I have um, a lot of those traits. And so um, it feels good to me about having rules. And um, But Tina, on the other hand, she reacts negatively to rules, right? Just like, the word rules. Like the, to me, yeah. those are the thou shalt not or the hammer's going to fall. Like that's to me, that's the connotation that rules bring up in my brain. So like, I love boundaries and I set very clear boundaries and I get very upset when somebody crosses my boundaries. So I'm not, I don't disagree with the concept. Mm -hmm. I just have a negative reaction to that word. And I thought, well, maybe somebody else listening might yeah. also <laughs> have a negative reaction to the word rules. Look what right. Piper put. <laughs> Uh, Piper put, I have a rebellious spirit. Rules feel like a dare. <laughs> right? That's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, agreed. And I'm so glad that Tina brought that up in our meeting because I would never have thought about that. But so what we, we want to talk about this at the very beginning to establish that if I use the, rude, the word rules, we're talking boundaries. We're talking expectations. We're talking, we're not talking, there's not going to be a person there like with a, you know, a stop sign that's going to hold it up in the middle of writing group or like, the, we're not looking for that. We're looking for more like expectations, procedures and like that. But so if I use the word rules, it's only because that's just the word that's comfortable with me. And I don't mean it to be a negative one. Okay. So why are they necessary though? Why are these boundaries necessary? Well, it's like I'm tempted to kind of jump to point number two um, because I'm mm -hmm. I'm super passionate about having rules or whatever you want to call them for that reason. Is that OK to talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I think that it is important if you want to achieve anything that everybody on the team is pulling in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And how can you pull in the same direction if you don't know what that direction is? And what rules do is point you in the appropriate direction because you cannot do everything 
And so the rules are going to narrow the scope and focus of the group and assure that <clears throat> your group is going to be what you want it to be, which mm -hmm. I guess feeds into what was going to be point number one. Right, Jen? Right. Because we like you have to come to consensus, consensus whether or not you feel like there should be rules. And if you feel like there should be no rules, then that's your rule. Right. So it, there has to be some sort of like, you know, and we established last week that whoever decides to start the writing group, they're the one that's putting the work in and they're probably the ones that's going to set these expectations. So um, I would I would say that the three of us agree that there has to be some sort of of expectation set. Agreed. Yes. Yeah, because otherwise you just end up with a really toxic situation. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, or so even if it's not toxic, it would not be effective. Because you'd be all over the place and there wouldn't be any structure. Jamie brought up when our meeting, she said that um, most disappointment is born of unmet expectations. And that really struck me because if we each come into a writing group and there aren't clear expectations or rules, I'm going to keep using the word rules, then I come in expecting that writing group is going to look a certain way. Tina comes in thinking that writing group is going to look like this. Jamie looks, looks at it a different way. Rhonda looks at it a whole other way. And we come in and no matter how the writing group work, looks, ends up running, someone is going to be disappointed and their expectations aren't going to be met. Now I wish that that would have been our sprint prompt today because all I can picture is showing up for writing group only to find out that it's like 45 minutes of what's up. And, oh. you know, catch up with your girlfriends yes. and then you leave and you've not talked a, a whiff about writing. You haven't done a bit of sharing. You haven't gotten any help or feedback about your work, but everybody else is leaving satisfied because they just want a girlfriend time, which is totally fine. But that would absolutely not meet my needs for a writing group. Right. And so if I would have known ahead of time, like, hey, come to our writing group and here's what to expect. That's what the rules give you um, yeah. is, you know, even if it says 45 minutes of catch up and share, we're very loose. We're not structured. These kinds of things can really help people keep them from um, being disappointed. Right. Exactly. Same thing with like we when we went to our first writing retreat, we had like certain expectations and we'll we'll probably have an episode. I know we're going to have an episode on writing retreats. So I'll, I'll just leave that there. But yes, expectations are important. So no matter what we call them, um, we there needs to be something. So what should that something be? So, well, what do you, do you mean? Like what specific rules? Sorry, I yes. jumped away from my outline. Yep. No, nope, that's um, okay. Yeah. So well, I, can't, all... I can't see the outline. So. <laughs> oh, poor, poor, poor teen in her eyes. Okay. Well, decide what you should call them. First of all, you know what I mean? Like if there right. is someone who ah, rules, well, then figure that out. Right. I think maybe expectations is a great one because boundaries, rules, they all kind of sound the same to me, but expectations really, I think, gets to the heart of it. If I walk in, here's the expectations of how this group is going to run or procedures. I like the word procedures. That really speaks to my soul, my list making soul. Um, so you may already have some procedures already based on how you intend this group to look when you conceived it. So when if we go back to last week's episode and we talked about the fact that you need to know what your expectations are, those expectations inherently are going to create some rules. If your expectations are that it's like Jamie point, like pointed out, is that this is basically going to be a coffee chat time, then th that right there is going to be part of your rules. But if your expectations are you need a group of people that are going to meet monthly and sit down and get some writing done, again, there are some of your expectations. If you're looking for creating a group that's going to be doing critique, again, there are some of your expectations. And you right? need to decide and, again, stick to your non-negotiables. You should already yeah. know before you start having this conversation about the rules what some of those things are. You know, if you really feel strongly about limiting the catch-up time to 15 minutes, then you need to implement, we're going to set a timer. And when the timer goes off after 15 minutes, we're all going to switch gears and go into, do you know what I'm saying? Yes. And it's okay. It's okay to want something that mm -hmm. serves you. Let me say it again for the people in the back. Amen, sister. It is okay 
to want something that serves you. Because again, you bathe this whole thing in prayer, remember? Mm -hmm. And you're considering what's my husband going to say about this use of my time? What are the other people in my life who are expecting me to show up for them going to say about this use of my time? You're not being selfish or doing something wrong by sticking to your non-negotiables. Mm -hmm. And that's really how this podcast started, because we couldn't find a podcast that we wanted. And so and we, we had some non-negotiables. Yeah. Right. And we made the podcast that we wanted. True. Piper says, I ended up leaving a Bible study because of this reason. So much sharing and catching up. We never made it through the study. Been there. Yeah. Craig says, in a writing group, I like to have a structure, sharing, critique, encouragement, planning, accountability. Sounds kind of like our, a little bit like our podcast, but agreed. And, and Piper agrees with him as well. Um, so there, along with you making these decisions of what your group is going to look like, there are also some things that you wouldn't think about, but you need to have like established either in writing or somehow, but the meeting day and time, you think that might sound silly, but this is something you have to decide because once you get people in there, if you don't have a set meeting time every week, you have to sit down and decide, okay, what time are we getting together next time? That's going to be chaos. Mm -hmm. Establishing a meeting day and a meeting time will help you to process and, and it will make the members of your writing group feel better about being in this group. They're going to feel more like it, it's going to be more important to them. They're going to see that this is something that has priority because it has a set day and time. So making a meeting day and time as part of your procedures or rules, I believe is important. Absolutely. Right. And if it's, if it's a time and a day that works for you, then the people who also have that day and time are the people that need to join. Right. So that you, because if if you let everyone else decide, then pretty soon you can't go to your own writing group. Right. Exactly. I mean, because everybody's schedules, you know. And maybe they need to start a different writing group if they can't fit into yours, which I'm not trying yeah. to be exclusive, but that is really for sure. So. Okay. So after you select the meeting date and time, what would you guys think, say is maybe possibly the next most important thing that you would do for expectations? Food. No, just kidding. <laughs> Well, well, the format of the meeting is yeah. Food, you know, food comes later. It's food important, later. but okay. yes, go ahead, Tina. Right. Food fits into the format. It does. It does. Like yeah. when when are we going to eat our food? Fits mm -hmm. right in there with what are we going to do? Are we going to have sprinting? Are we going to have critiquing? Um, like, what is the format of the meeting going to look like? How much time are we going to spend on each thing? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. When, and when are we going to eat? Yeah. <laughs> And I All think that. that Craig, if Craig was someone in this discussion, <clears throat> I might say, oh, okay, Craig, because he has clear expectations. He would like, he would like structure. He wants sharing, critique, encouragement, planning, and accountability. Well, then you decide, well, how does that look for our writing group? So how much time do we have allotted? First of all, if it's a two hour writing group and there's six people showing up, do we divide up that into chunks of however many minutes of sharing each? Do we mm -hmm. offer critique or not? All of these questions, keeping in mind the boundaries and parameters of time that you've already set. And again, this is why it's important that you do this with only your bestie, because when we started to do this, we had already been meeting as a group and there were seven of us. And so when we start to talk about sharing and everything like that, we realized that the time was going to be tricky with so right. many people. So if we were meeting just... for three or four hours. I mean, it was not a small amount of time. It was like 9 a.m. till one, I believe, uh -uh. right? It I was, it was even, a it was... commitment we were making. Yeah. yeah. And so if you don't want that, then you and Bestie probably better say, well, this is our format. We can only invite three other people to be a part mm -hmm. of this, right? It's not necessarily the more the merrier and the bigger the group, the better, because you lose the ability to have what you want Mm -hmm. in in an effort to become huge or massive right Which, and we mm -hmm. sorry we joke about food but really are we going to be eating while we're critiquing are we going to be eating while we're you know like because there are some people like i have a, a child that that really has issues with people eating around them like the or especially if they eat with their mouth open and and so you don't know about the people around your table you know plus like we did not want to be critiquing or be receiving critique from somebody who's stuffing a chicken salad sandwich in their mouth at the same time, <laughs> you know? So we decided it feels like they're not listening to you. Yes. Yeah. We decided that, that plus two, we wanted social time as well. We wanted to connect with each other. So we decided that the, that food was important to us because we were going <laughs> to the time we were meeting and also that we wanted that to be a connection time, not so much a work time. 
And that was mm-hmm. important to us. But you and your group might decide differently. You might have it at a time right in the middle of the afternoon where you're not covering up like a meal time and maybe food isn't important like maybe you're not like like us maybe you're a psychopath because food. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding so anyway look, these are the things that we talked about so the link the meeting day and time how long you're going to meet um and then what you're going to be doing within that time period and then you take that time period and you do have to do the math of it we found out that we had to schedule how much time each person got allotted to them for the critique time, because when you started off, we were all excited to share. And then pretty soon we realized we'd only gotten through two people and we were halfway through our time. Mm -hmm. Right. So again, we started like setting a timer, not because we were like all about rules, but we were all about respect and respecting each other's time and being fair to everybody else, which is something that we didn't think about when we started a writing group. You know, I thought that this would happen. Piper said she's been a part of groups where everyone had to submit early for critique, where people gave marketing advice in addition to critiques, and where there were no critiques, all valid for different people. Okay, well, what that did was that triggered in my mind, if you want people to submit early, are you going to do that by a Facebook group? Are you going to do that by an email chain? Do you know some fancy thing that your office uses to connect with people like Monday? What is going to be the method via which people submit those um, early pieces of writing. And so then your rules are going to contain a requirement that you be a part of blah, 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 Facebook group, because you need to be able to download the document. And mm-hmm. if the person doesn't want to join Facebook, well, hey, you only have slots for three people anyway. So you see how having these boundaries helps you not feel bad to have to say, well, maybe this group isn't for you, because you do not want to have someone who does not fit that you have to go and jump through a bunch of hurdles to accommodate that person when the person who is out there that will be a good fit for you is longing for a community yes. like yours. Right. And Kim says then the timer is the bad guy, not the members. Yes. Exactly. Yes. All these things, these, these expectations help you not to be the bad guy, but be the good guy. Cause you're setting up these expectations to respect each other's time. And like that, again, if your expectations are, it's just social hour to come in and talk about writerly things and have coffee. Great. You just communicate that to the people that are going to be coming in. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, Shell says, I used to use that timer trick on my kids with limiting video game time. <laughs> Me, old Mr. Timer. <laughs> I used to use it at McDonald's in the Playland. Remember when McDonald's mm-hmm. all had Playlands? Yeah. I used to yeah. use the timer. Five minutes, kids. And, and then I can the bad guy. And they can earn more time by doing my chores. Ooh. Ooh. I like that, too. I wish you that in writing group. Okay, Tina, you can have five minutes of my time. <laughs> if, I don't know what. You clean my kitchen. <laughs> they clean. Yeah, I'll, I'll go without the five but minutes. That's a yeah, good question. Can you give up your own. time? That's a can, good question for your group. A, we yes, we discovered we discovered that too. So can you give up your time to someone else? And we decided yes, you could. But the but is you can't do that every week. Everyone had skin in the game. As skin in the game. We way. always said you, you got to have skin <laughs> in the game. Like, like if I were, let's say I'm coming to group with these two ladies every week and I'm critiquing their work, but every week I show up and say, I don't have anything to submit this week. Uh, you guys can have my time, but I'm willing to critique their stuff. Uh, uh-uh. It doesn't work that way. It, it is very, a very raw and um, nerve wracking thing, especially when you're first starting out to share your writing with another, another group of writers for them to look at and then to critique like that not is, to give positive feedback no, like, like we do on feeding other backs. We do give positive, but we give the real stuff too. Yeah. Like we really give you the real meat of like what you need to be able to improve your writing. And who are you to like not put your skin in the game, to not like put your <laughs> like writing out there for the rest of us to look at, but then want to come and critique everyone else's. And we found that that was an issue with, and it wasn't like anyone trying to be a jerk. They had anxieties of their own. But at the same time, we had to have that expectation so that that um, we it didn't turn into a toxic situation. So right. one of the rules we would suggest is not only would you have set time and you time it for everybody's um, participation, but that in special cases, you can give up your time or part of your time to someone else, but that on the regular, everybody has to have some skin in the game. Mm-hmm. But can we talk real quick? Why would somebody need extra time? Why would, what are some of the examples of why we would give up extra time? I'm so glad you asked. Like, so if someone it's comes not even with on a, the outline, yeah, if someone comes with a really tricky plot point and the discussion gets into like 
sort of a debate among what would even be the right approach between like, maybe you're not Mm -hmm. ready to move on because the group is actually um, doing good work and to move on would leave the person who brought the problem to the table um, still needing resolution or would um, interfere with just the, the, the good work that is being done there. Mm -hmm. And um, if you brought a piece that you are not as passionate about getting feedback on, um, or, or like your piece, uh, you've brought it a few times and you're just reading them now, the third version of a piece that's been polished. And, and you think to yourself, well, I don't need to hear again. Well, I still think you need a comma here. Then you might be willing to relinquish your time to the plot point at hand. I kind of remember that happening like with Tina, I think one time where we were just kind of all trying to solve something. And Mm -hmm. so uh, the people who were like after her were like, no, 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 we need to, we need to be here trying to solve this particular challenge. Right. I remember it happening once with me and I don't remember the problem, but I know I remember like my feeling about it right now was it was truly more of a spiritual, emotional um, difficulty that I was having with my piece at that time. And Rhonda said, I think she was, might've been the first one. She's like, Jen can have my time. Mm -hmm. And that meant the world to me. Like I felt at first I was like, no, no, no. And she's like, no, you can. And like, she was very adamant about it and felt like I just, it was a God moment. It truly Mm -hmm. was. And, um, I don't even, honestly, I don't remember what the problem was, but I remember how it made me feel. And Mm -hmm. so I think that having that ability to do that in a writing group is very, very important. Um, but it needs to be, um, once, if you have the expectations, then it's not going to happen all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the expectations. However, we're going to put that aside for this one time, right? Mm -hmm. So that's important because, because again, these are Christian writing groups. These are not just regular writing groups. We've been part of, all of us have been part of (laughs) regular writing groups and we don't want to go back. Like (laughs) I think that leads us into our next point, I guess, which is how much, what kind of spice level do you want um, people bringing to share? What sort of content are you wanting people to bring to, to share? Um, if that's important to you, you, I mean, you've obviously thought about this before you approach Bestie about what rules you want, then it's important to articulate them in your rules, right? right. So like if it's PG or cleaner, please, or however you want to word it for your particular situation, it's important to set that expectation. Correct. I couldn't we- believe I went to a local writing group and um, this person was like, and now I am about to read this intimacy scene. And I was just like, seriously, you're going to like read that right out loud right now in this room. Full- and I just like, I couldn't because like it was just kind of it felt creepy. It felt voyeuristic or I yeah. don't even know. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe I'm just a prude or something, but I I, I just couldn't. And it didn't ever occur to me that that would be the piece that someone would pluck out and bring. But right. I mean, I guess people need feedback about that too. So, and we chose to be a Christian. We wanted a Christian group. This is what, well, cause Rhonda started our group. Um, and you may not choose that, but you need to definitely set up those expectations yes. because otherwise you're going to end up reading some stuff you don't want to ever be reading. Uh, Kim I'd says, like to welcome okay. Jamie to prude club, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the first rule of prude girl club is <laughs> nobody talks about. Prude. Okay. Kim says, I'm like the comma queen, not in a good way. I think my handle should be comma Kim. Commas for everyone. <laughs> you have a comma. You get a comma. Hey, I always say I'm a kamikaze. Comma. <laughs> so the way we hand, so what the way we handled critique, I, I guess we didn't even dress this in the outline, is that we did have to send out our writing in advance. And I don't remember how many days in advance that we used to do it, but we would send it out in advance so that everybody had time to read through everybody's submissions. And then you either printed it and you would like hand do like like the comma kind of um, mistakes, or you would do it like in Google Docs or something where you could like highlight and stuff like that. And then whoever the person was getting the critique got all of those back. But that's not what we discussed. We didn't discuss the commas and like we just, you know, because you're hoping to give your writing group the cleanest version of your writing as possible. Otherwise, you're not going to get good critique back. If I'm reading your stuff and I am so lost in having to show you where all your commas are, then you're not going to get a good critique from me. So you want to make sure you give them as clean a possible as possible of a, a piece, right? So um yeah. Anyways. And 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 then we would read them out loud. Yes. At the meeting. Oh, yes. And that was really a a really like the feedback that you get from reading it out loud and hearing the the natural reactions of people listening is actually really good feedback. 
Mm -hmm. You're right. I am wrong, Tina. You're right. When we did, I was thinking about when we used to do um, the online writing group, the, on our, um, Mm -hmm. what is that called? Uh, Patreon. Patreon. Um, Yeah. When we did it, when we had the writing group, we did it live, but we brought enough copies for everybody to have a copy in front of them so they Mm -hmm. could be writing, making notes and stuff. You're right. Mm -hmm. That was good. Like I loved it when I got to like the parts that I was hoping to get that reaction and I'd hear Rhonda (gasps) in the middle of it. Like, yeah, (laughs) that was great. Yeah. Yeah, And I I liked, I liked having the hard copy in front of me, not just Mm -hmm. to read along, but then I could throw in the commas that I did catch or, Mm -hmm. you know, jot into the margin, this part I liked or kind of whatever. So there's a million ways to handle it. You think it's hard to present your writing to some like a writing group? Try presenting your writing to a writing group and sit next to Jamie, who you've never met, and she offers to read it out loud for you. Would you think, I don't have to read my writing? And then you hear someone else reading your writing. <laughs> and it's just like, I literally uh, did this. I was just like, I had my for real, on. she did. She I, for real did. I, I was like, I didn't even expect that reaction. I'm not shy. But You're not a shy like, person. That It was. So we get it, everyone. We understand that writing groups, you are vulnerable. We get it. That's why it's so important to set these expectations in advance to help protect like those of uh, the, out there that could join your group that maybe feel even more vulnerable than that, but need this kind of connection and this kind yes, of Yes. And your rules can help you keep the people out who you may not feel want to feel that vulnerable with, you see? So it is very, the, these are very to help you. These are very much a shield and very much a fence or however you want to look at it um, to your, to your betterment, to your well being, right? Exactly. So to sum everything up, we think, first of all, keep your rules concise. Because the less the less you have and the more simple, the better, because it's just easier to go back to them, right? It's easier to say, but don't forget, you know, like have procedures for how it's going to run and have rules about, you know, how clean it needs to be, how we're going to discuss and how we're going to treat each other. Um, but you don't want to get bogged down with too many rules. Like you really, I, like I would be the queen of that. I would be able to write an entire thick document of how <laughs> everything is going to run in the group. And you don't want that because you want to have that ability to hand over your time. You want to have that ability to say, hold up a second. I think we need to stop and pray. Right. And we, I, need- yes. And I just personally- like, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I would build into that first meeting a time to come back and revisit. So Mm -hmm. if you're meeting once a month, say, well, in three months, um, can we put something in our calendar, me and you, whoever bestie is, whoever these people are that are helping you establish the rules, and let's evaluate how these rules are going. Um, And then as your group grows, you guys become kind of like the steering committee or whatever you want to call it. But um, you guys just revisit to make sure that those rules really were the right choice for your group, because maybe you didn't recognize how much time your your peeps would actually want for that coffee and chatter talk or or whatever. And you can choose to change these rules or not. But Mm -hmm. I would be open to and then annually visiting them after that so that you're not constantly changing the rules of the game and not changing them prematurely when it might just need a few weeks to get the kinks worked out. Right. Agreed. And ultimately the reason for boundaries or expectations or rules is for mutual respect, to Mm -hmm. respect each other's time, respect each other's work, respect each other's feelings um, and kindness um, above everything else. Because as Christians, it should be a no, (coughs) excuse me, we shouldn't have to say (coughs) that you should treat everyone with love. Right. Mm -hmm. That's how we, (laughs) that's how we approach everything in life as Christians. And at the very least, right. This writing group should be treated that way as well. I appreciate that, Tina. So every week here on the podcast, speaking of writing groups, every week here (laughs) on the podcast, we show you a little mini version of a writing group, except for this is only the positives because we come every week with a prompt and we spend 15 minutes together writing. And I promise you, we spent today. Okay. So today when the 15 minute timer went up, I said, I see another minute because I needed to finish out the sentence so that it, you know, which probably was fine. Whatever. I actually wanted to write a lot more. (laughs) <laughs> um, but we only give positive feedback right now because we've not edited this in a writing group. Remember I said, you have to bring the cleanest possible transcript that you can for the people that are going to be critiquing you. Otherwise, like they're going to be lost in all of the problems. 
Um, but this one, we only give positive feedback because we've not edited it at all. So we call this the feeding of our backs and it's our favorite time of the episode. If you like this, we would love it if you would participate. We um, put the podcast prompt out every Friday at 9 a.m. Unless, unless you're a member of our group, you get it days in advance. So you have all week to decide or to fit your time in your 15 minutes to write. So those of you that are in our group, I, did you appreciate that? I'd like to know in the chat if you like the getting that early because um, we'll keep doing that if so. All right. So our feeding of the backs, I am going to go today to you, Tina. We're going to go first with you to hear what okay. you wrote. Um, okay. So when I started this, we were all complaining. Always. <laughs> About yes. these words. And I thought, well, matrix, I can work with that. So I started out writing thinking I was going to find, I was going to work with the word matrix and I never did. <laughs> <laughs> I started what? writing and then this just came out. So what are their, um, the words? I'm sorry. Matrix, sync, current, finished, and game were the words. Okay, so this is a continuation of the story I've been writing on in on most Fridays. Not a continuation, just another scene. Nicholas knew he should do something. At least the thought was there vaguely in the back of his mind, but he sat frozen in his chair, staring at the empty cell the creature had just been in. Peter responded first, a string of curse words flowing from his lips as he jumped to his feet and frantically punched in the security code on the cell door. What did he think he was going to do, Nicholas wondered. The creature was gone. There was no warning, just a blinding flash of light. Nicholas had thrown his arm over his face in an effort to block it, but it still took several moments for the bright spot in the center of his vision to fade. That's when he'd realized the creature was gone, vanished literally into thin air. The bonds they'd attached to the creature that they thought had weakened it too much to fight them lay undamaged on the floor. If the creature had suddenly found a measure of strength and broken them, that would at least make sense. But this? It reminded him of the mass abductions that had happened the year before. Millions of people had simply vanished. Just their physical bodies, though, their clothes, jewelry, glasses, hearing aids, and even surgical implants lay in the places those people had been. Nicholas had forced himself not to think about the fate of those with pacemakers and hip replacements and what existence with whatever alien race had taken them would even be like. Mm. Are you just going to sit there? Peter shouted. I should have shouted that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas noted the panic on the young man's face and feeling disconnected from his own words replied, at least we still have the samples. They both turned and looked at the vials neatly lined up in their white plastic holder but the liquid, which used to glow with a soft blue light, was now pitch black. Nicholas felt his stomach rise into his throat, the contents of his breakfast threatening to reappear. Mm. Heat flooded his cheeks, and the room began to spin. Peter grabbed a sample vial and a syringe and rushed to the microscope, preparing a slide with shaking hands. Nicholas closed his eyes, concentrating on his churning stomach and trying to ignore the increased saliva in his mouth. It's still violet. I'm sorry, violet. It's still viable, Peter yelled triumphantly. Nicholas turned and emptied his stomach into the trash. Oh, so good. I okay. like that the white light takes a long time to disappear from oh, his yeah. vision. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's an important detail. It is very important. And I love like just the this the imagery, like that the the vial has changed colors and that like He's questioning like other things that are happening in the world. Like it's just so good, Tina. Like the story is gonna be so great. Um, I can't my mouse work. Kim says chills again. Liz says, Oh, it's a post-rapture story. This scene hits differently after last week's sprint. Yes, it sure does. Like now we're on the edge of our seat, like wanting more. So um Piper says, Oh, I need to know that love getting this. I know I need to wait. I need you to know that I love getting this story in bits and pieces like this. Yeah, I agree. Like it's it serialized. Be, yeah, it could almost be like a Vela. Yeah. Shell says, great scene, Tina. So many great little details. Agreed. Agreed. Thanks, um, guys. I wanted to point out something from earlier, too. Um, oh, Barbara says that she did her second sprint this week and that she's on a streak. LOL. <laughs> oh, good. Good for you, Barbara. I We're hope happy. you're going to post it in the group yeah, so we can group. read it. 
Yeah. Oh, we have um, Joan with us. Good morning, Joan. She's able to join us after her meeting. She says, your description is so beautiful, Tina, and it feels like I'm right there in the story. Agreed. Thanks. So I think this would also be great as a graphic novel. Imagine if you found mm. the right artist to like oh, yeah. uh, draw that all up. That'd be so cool. Yeah. After you make millions of dollars on this on this one, then you can have a graphics novel version of it. It'd be great. Yeah, fair. That's my plan. Barbara says, nice <laughs> details and love they didn't put two and two together. Of course, aliens. Yeah, right. So mm -hmm. I've thought about that a lot. Like, how is the world going to explain away mm. the rapture? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I will go after that. Mine's a completely different genre, as you all know. Um, I am also working in my next series. Just I don't know what I'll do with any of these scenes, if any of them, but it's great for me to get my headspace in this uh, Widows of the West series that I'm working in. And so, all right. The only word I did not use was matrix. Cause I just couldn't <laughs> figure out how to, like, I know what matrix means, but I just don't know that it would be a term that that would have been used. I don't know. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. So. I don't know if Colleen knows what it means. Yeah. I don't exactly. Okay. you know, they might, but they might, but are I mean, they the, learned <laughs> and it's not just Colleen with the narrator even, you know what I mean? So, yeah. All right. <clears throat> A current of despair swirled around Colleen, engulfing her in its enormity. She was she was powerless to fight it off, even if she had wanted to, but she didn't want to. She was tired of playing this game, tired of play acting the role of strong Christian woman, the proverbial Proverbs 31 ideal. She was finished, and she let herself sink, both emotionally and physically, to the floor. Living with Dinny had been hard, but she had suffered through it knowing God was with her. Dinny was an evil man, but God was good, and she drew her strength from the knowledge that her Lord mourned with her. Every time she cried over her circumstances, she knew he cried too. Every slap or punch she weathered, knowing he held her tightly, knowing he sheltered her from the worst of the assault, that he sustained her. Colleen drew strength from God when facing evil. But Cade wasn't evil. Cade was good and godly and caring and everything she had imagined her heavenly father truly wanted for her and a husband. He was a physical representation of the Holy Scriptures. But God didn't give Cade to her. Cade was to belong to another woman, a woman that in Colleen's eyes didn't deserve him. And faced with that realization, Colleen was forced to acknowledge something that she had always known but refused to admit. God really didn't love her. Dun, dun, dun. That's all we get? Oh, you get. I wrote it's slow supposed today. To be positive feedback only, but I am like, it's okay. Miffed that this has ended. <laughs> I guess That's that okay. is positive feedback because I liked it so much. Oh, thank you. And I, it's really interesting to find out the why she is having so much despair. I thought that this, like, so this must be a little earlier on or a little later on in the book. Like, she yeah. discovers whatever she discovers because she doesn't even like him before. So obviously, she turned the corner about like, well, maybe it's not so bad that he's looking at me across the campfire. Do you know what I mean? Right. Right. So yeah, that was I, my reaction. I was like, what in the world has he done? <laughs> right. Like he, he was watching her across the campfire and all this tension. And, uh, and all of a sudden there's another woman. Now yeah. we need the middle part. Right. This, this is, is so definitely, this is definitely towards the end. You're doing this on purpose to make us buy your book. I know you are You're such an <laughs> evil <laughs> slick marketer. I am as, an evil. As if we wouldn't <laughs> buy it anyway. Oh, um, so, all right. So this is it for everyone listening. This is a great example of what sprints can do. Like, um, I cannot unpack. I, I know what I, I, I've gotten out of this sprint, but this sprint is not going to last exactly as it is. Sure. Like this needs to be unpacked so much more. But what I now can see now, if, if I use this is that this is a woman that, um, was strong for so long. And now she's come to face with what she thought God was finally telling her only to find out that, well, at least possibly the God's saying no, and it's not someone evil. It is something that is good. And God doesn't want her to have good things. He only allows her to have the bad guys. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I so do know what you're this saying. It's going to be her struggle now. <laughs> and so, right. And so, um, feeling that 
that desolation and feeling as if God has left you and that like was even there to begin with. And like, there's so much I can unpack now that if I hadn't sprinted this, I probably wouldn't have known where to go with this right now. Mm -hmm. So well, and it will help you too, because I know that what you've been sprinting is just sprinting, but as you're really drafting this story, you can, you know, Colleen a little better. How about that? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. All of these things, they're all not going to make it in the book, but I know my characters better now because of them. So. So much in the chat. What, Tina? Um, to me, who is not normally um, a romance fan, mm-hmm. um, this is what makes your books different than most romances, than I, the ones that I reject, because mm-hmm. there's like a depth <laughs> there. It's not fluffy surface, you know, butterflies in the stomach and sweaty palms and sex scenes. Mm-hmm. It's there's well, there's no sex if, scenes. Just making that clear. Well, I'm, yeah. right. I'm just like <laughs> right. saying, like even if it's fade to black, like right. S- some so many of them have no substance, and yeah. I love the depth of the spiritual message that comes through. I really uh, appreciate which that. is why, like, I have read like Redeeming Love and really loved it when I'm not normally a romance fan. So it's like along mm-hmm. those lines. I truly that that is the greatest compliment. I really truly appreciate that. Thank you. Well, before, um, uh, just so you know, Gigi said, Tina, she really loved your storyline. And then, um, so here we go, uh, Jen. Oh my gosh, that is so, ugh. And then, uh, gutted from Shell. Yes. I mean, I think we all really relate to being on the floor. Sink both ways and God sheltering and loving her. So many tingles. Oh no, God does love you. I want more too from Kim Anderson. Piper says, um, sorry, that's not positive. I hate that she feels that way, but you have written it so well, Jen. Thanks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Liz Henderson, my heart, that jealousy and ache. Yep. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. I think we all feel God doesn't love us. Why can't we have a perfect life? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Gigi. Oh, Jen. Oh, my goodness. Heart wrenching. Matrix is in the Bible. Exodus 13. <gasps> Thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> I wasn't sure. But in a sprint, I didn't know. So Yeah. Uh, okay. Joan says she could totally relate to the feeling of wanting to be the strong Christian woman when you don't feel like it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Could feel her emotions. And then Barbara, real romance, not heavy panting that fades. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's Appreciate what Tina that. was saying also. Very good. That was a great, you, great Thanks, spread. Tina. And you didn't want to write and you knew it would be good because you were I said, very resistant to this prompt. <laughs> I said that like, cause that's when God shows up, right? Whenever we yeah. complain the most, I think is when our best writing comes out. At least with the three of us. So well, I didn't complain at all. If that tells you anything about my piece. <laughs> <laughs> well, it goes along with the thing that I've heard said over and over again in ministry that God doesn't call the equipped; He mm. equips the called. Mm. And so it's very similar. Like you were not equipped; <laughs> you're not ready for this mm-hmm. sprint with those words. That's so true. But the Holy Spirit took it and did something right with it. Thank you. I appreciate that, Tina. All right, Jamie. So well, I think I got, great. yeah, I think I got two of the words in and then like forgot about the words and didn't want to scroll up to look and see what they were. So, <laughs> um, here we go. If we were living in the matrix, I'd sure prefer it would be something a bit more glamorous than this. Cynthia <laughs> said, shaking her head, shaking her head and plunging the yellow rubber gloves deep into the suds filled sink. She chuckled, shaking her head as if the idea that this entire world was a simulation was something only her harebrained boss's child would ever consider. I twirled the Tootsie Pop I was eating around on my tongue until the flavor of orange disappeared and the sucker became only the sensation of something sweet, then tucked it into the pocket where my left cheek meets my gum line, folded my arms and leaned back against the stove, marveling. How do you do that without getting water all down in those gloves? I asked her. How do I do what now? She asked, and her hands went still as though she needed absolute focus to interpret the meaning of my words. Those gloves, I said, making a grabbing motion up near my elbows. If I were wearing them, I'd end up getting warm sudsy water all up in them, the way the flaps all open all wide and all. Well, I reckon the rubber glove people got to make gloves for all sizes of ladies, and I reckon most people got a bit more meat on them than I do. I sighed. I had meant to get a response to the question I'd asked, and she decided I was making a complaint about the ends of the gloves being all flappy and wide. (laughs) It was pointless to ask again, especially because I didn't wish to keep the conversation on the nature of Cynthia's bird-like frame. So I just resumed watching the way she plunged and swirled her hands into those deep, deep suds, swishing and splashing, wondering if such efficiency could become mine through some sort of visual osmosis. You tell your daddy yet? She asked without looking up from her task. Tell him what? 
You know what? She did look up then, but only for a moment, only a little peek, the connection of our eyes telegraphing that she'd heard what my mother and I'd been discussing in the living room only an hour before. You heard all that, huh? I asked, not accusing, not even mad, but Cynthia was too proud or too polite or too something to admit to having overheard anything, even if she had only been innocently cleaning the powder room when I'd broken Mama's heart. You gonna tell him over dinner? She pulled the plug on the sink and we stood together, watching the suds swirl and disappear with a gurgling sound that seemed altogether too cheerful for the moment. After dinner, maybe. He likes to eat. Don't want to put him off his grub. After dinner, then, Cynthia said, pulling her gloves off with a resolute nod. She pulled open the freezer. That decides it for me, then. I was going to do a pot roast, but your daddy, he likes meatloaf. She pulled two white packages from the chili compartment and turned to grab an onion from the bowl on the counter. She turned and handed it to me. Here you go now. You chop this. Get all your tears out of you. I nodded and took the onion. Thanks. Oh, Jamie. <sighs> okay, for my first, I have to ask a question first. Is this a complete story or like, are you going to come back to these characters? I think I might be done with that. I figured because like you, you're so good at writing quickly, writing an entire story to where we know these characters. We love these characters. We know what's going on without knowing what's going on. And you bring it to a point where it's just like, this is it. This is like, here's the onion. Like, so well done, Jamie. I don't know how you do that in 15 minutes. Like, I love this character, the Cynthia. I love the, um, like, just the, the role that she plays in the story. Like, yeah, just so well done. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh you're, you're muted, muted Tina. Tina. <clears throat> Sorry. In, in. In the beginning, I was I started out a little disappointed that Heads was a typo. <laughs> <laughs> because I love when Jamie goes into like her science fiction weird stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that was so good. And um, like I forgot that I was supposed to be thinking of things to say about I know. <laughs> How, that happens I all was, the time to me with her. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to like really get into the, I was into the scene and I was trying to like analyze every little bit to try to figure out what was going on because I love that kind of stuff. So it was just really good. Really juicy. I appreciate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think if someone is reading it, it might, it might not necessarily be a quick read. <laughs> yeah. I, I agree with all of that. And I, I find myself in the same spot often with Jamie's writing is that like, I get so involved in it that I forget I was supposed to be looking for details to like praise her on. Uh, so then I end up at the end saying, that was so good. That was really <laughs> yeah. good, Jamie. Like, I don't sound like an intelligent critiquer at all, but yeah, it was. I'm, again, it was so good. Like It was. Yeah. I would, and I would not be opposed to you like expanding this story very much like, you know, uh, Piper says, oh, wow, I want to know what she needs to tell daddy. I think I know what she wants to tell her, but then again, does it matter? Like, for all of us, like we're all going to put something in there that we think that she's about to tell her. So that's Maybe why that's I kind of want to leave it. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of why I want to leave it the way it is because I just want it to me more about the relationship between these two women and like, well, three women, I guess, because the mom is involved too. But in this moment, it's just like this person who, who knows things and is like assisting without, she's pretending that she's not involving herself, but she mm -hmm. like absolutely is anyway. That is the point of the piece to me, right? right it's less yes. about what the secret is. And I feel like you being able to put your own secret in there is mm -hmm. like better. I feel right. like. Barbara says, what? Dishes, not glamour? Oh, well. <laughs> and then she said, everyday details, but not cliched. Agreed. Yeah. Thanks so much. Shell says, whoa, Jamie, the final onion line was so powerful. Yep. And everything leading up to it was so good. It was so spot on. Kim says, wow, so tactile. I just washed dishes, tears, and onions. I'm nervous about the conversation they're going to have. Joan says, so good, Jamie. I want more. Gigi says, Jamie, wow, this is so good. Complete story with real life characters. So many details that I get lost in loving every word. Love it. Piper says, I did love the onion at the end. I'm going to steal that and use it in real life. I live with a bunch of women. It'll come in handy at some point. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Piper says, very good points, Jamie. Appreciate so, yeah. that, everybody. Well done. 
Now, can if you're new to the podcast, now you can see why this is our favorite part of the whole week, of the whole episode is this because we get to get told how wonderful we are. Yes, I we love do. Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to get told how wonderful you are, you need to go join our Facebook group and share your sprint in the group, and you'll get all kinds of positive feedback. On Wednesday, um, our friend Maria Johnson posted a, a prompt for us in um, a one word prompt theme whatever and a lot of people participated and got a lot of great like encouragement and so that was fun to read so i did not participate because i just didn't have time to sit down and do that but next week i'm gonna try to so please if you did the sprint or if you're considering it go join our facebook group and um join all the other great people that are are fans of the show all right so i believe that's um all for that. Before we end, though, we like to end every episode with our what's next. What is going to happen next in our lives professionally? Um, and Jamie, I'm going to start with you. What's yeah, next for you? Yeah, um, I have some editing due for a friend of mine. And so that will be probably the bulk of anything that I do that's writing related. Also, I was trying to get my SSL certificate fixed on my website. And it's like, I didn't ever get the confirmation. So that's like all drama, all oh. the stuff that I absolutely hate. Yeah. About being independently published is like that kind of, ugh. I paid five so, years for mine last year I because did. it was such a pain. I didn't want to deal with it again. But you have to like make a new blit -de -de every year. So really? yeah, I yes, paid. I it's try. not that I owe money for it, but it's that it's going to like, I need to reissue a blah, 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 whatever. So it's like, hmm. if you go to writingshorts.net and it says, there's no security certificate. Well, that's why. So I hope it doesn't like show up as some kind of virus website for anybody in the meantime, while I try to get that fixed in all my spare time. And, uh, well, if you need any help, let me know. Thanks, Bambina. Go do it for me. That's what Yeah, I there want. you go. There's the help she wants. Send me your, your password. Oh, you're the best. I make all kinds of changes. <laughs> <laughs> what big giant ads for Tina's book on like every page. <laughs> I'm going to write this glowing review. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So my what's next is I'm in uh, editing mode when I can um, actually get down to the computer and sit down. It is crazy to me the difference. Like my laptop is now a desktop. Like it has gotten to the point where I can't uh, travel with it. And just having to come to the ones like... I just didn't realize how portable my work was before and mm -hmm. how much more I got done when I had a laptop that I could just take anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so um, anyway, so editing, 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 that's where I am. My headspace is right now. I'm really the only writing I'm getting done is little sprints and stuff here and there um, because I just got to really focus my time on the editing, but getting close to halfway through these edits, which means after that it goes into formatting and cover and all that stuff. And I can order a, eventually be able to order a proof copy but right now just editing That's all i got going on what about you bambina well i'm writing book three and it's going a little slower than last time because i'm doing this editing as you go process mm -hmm. and i'm really happy with it i took a scene like there were some scenes in my book too that i kind of wanted to flesh out and i said to myself i'll do that in revision then i mm -hmm. hated revision so much i was like oh no i don't even want to look at it mm. so i just like fixed the problems and published it okay. so now i have this scene that started out about 600 words and it's going it's going towards 4000 wow because it's not a scene anymore yeah, it's right. like a series <laughs> of scenes i'm right. um, like so exam for example i had a sentence that said he spent the last two weeks planning his escape well, I wrote the last two weeks. Like I didn't uh -huh. say he spent the last two weeks planning his escape. I put mm -hmm. the last two weeks of him planning his escape into the story. Mm -hmm. And then there was another line. Um, he'd spent he'd spent time in the great room reading to Ivan. And so instead of saying that, I'm gonna I'm writing this um, scene right now where he's actually reading to Ivan instead of just saying that. So. Um, that's going really well. I'm doing a book giveaway. You can win. Um, on July 2nd, I'm going to do a random drawing. And I'll put the link in the show notes. If you sign up for my newsletter, and, sign, or, and if you're already on my newsletter, you just have to go to this link and sign up to win. I'm going to do a drawing, and somebody's going to get a copy of hard, uh, not a hardback, a paperback copy of both Lost in the Land of the Midnight Sun and Alone in the Land of the Midnight Sun that's signed and personally 
addressed to them. That's so, exciting. Um, that's what I'm doing. So go and sign up and you can win these paperbacks. All right. Very cool. And so next week, so that completes what we do here on the podcast, but we have to, before we leave, we have to share with you that we have some exciting news. Next week, we are not continuing our series on writing groups. We're going to get, take a week off of that because we have the amazing Becca Syme coming live on the podcast Yay! with us next week. And she's going to be talking about her latest book, Dear Writer, Are You Intuitive? So if you have not um, listened to, if you've not seen Becca Syme before, we do have a podcast with her earlier. Um, you can go check that out. But um, she'll be here next week. And trust me, you're going to love it. She is a great soul. We just love her so much. And it's going to be an awesome show. So, yeah. but until then... And if we, I know we didn't get to anybody else's what's next in our chat, please, please, please go over to the Facebook group and add your what's next. So we can all comment on that. We're just went over on our time today. So we appreciate y'all and we just hope to see you over there so we can continue the conversation. Right. So thank you so much for everybody being here. And until next week, may your pen be prolific. May your deadlines be met and may all of your words honor Christ. Bye now. Bye. Bye.